My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional biking kit tester for over 25 years. And this is the tech talk around on Scott's XC trail blurring downcountry Spark 910. So why am I saying that about it blurring the lines? Basically because this is exactly the same frame as Scott's insanely successful RC cross country race bike. 120 mil of travel. And on this latest version, that rear shock is hidden inside the frame there so uh, you've got a little bell crank basically there's another section inside that on that alloy linkage that drives the top of this trunnion mounted shock it's an it's a fox shock on this bike but there are also versions with a rock shock shock and uh, so it's all hidden neatly inside there but it's 120 mil and then you've got this flex stay rear end there so there's no rear pivots and the whole so the whole thing is really really super neat and you can even see just the way they've kind of smoothed the lines in there and then you've got a little skirt over the back of there it's just really really neatly done you've got carbon fiber protector there where most brands would use a metal one you've got really nice rib chain dampening uh, strip on there and then here that's the hatch that you open to uh, access the top of the shock if you need to change the air pressure or you change the rebound settings because it's a uh, remote control system it uses the uh, scott what they call twin lock uh, so you've got two settings you've got what they call traction which uh, changes the foot rear end to 80 mil of travel and then you've got full lock which again it's not a totally hard lock there's still a bit of movement and then you can release it there and you can see that also works on the fork at the front but that means you're not getting any external compression adjustment on the shock because you've got this uh, cable reel on instead but you are still getting open mode compression adjustment on the little dial on the fork there because this is a full Fox 34 Performance Elite fork. So basically top spec fork, just without that uh, gold Kashima coating on the legs. And the fork is the other big difference on the 900 series bikes compared to the RC bikes, because this is 130 mil travel rather than 120 mil travel. And because Fox don't offer the uh, step cast, the lighter weight 34 in uh, 130 mil travel, it's only 120 mil it's only 120 mil that means uh it's the slower Ooh. leg casting so it's a heavier fork it's knocking on for 1900 grams this and it's the fit for it's not the grip two damper so it's the slightly tighter feeling more cross-country tuned fork as you'd expect for this bike and the other major difference in default setup is as well as having a longer fork it's got a two position headset top kelp which changes the angle by 1.2 degrees but uh, because of that extra fork length it means you're getting a 65.8 degree head angle rather than a uh, 67.2 so effectively one and 1.4 degrees slacker on these 910 bikes over the uh, rc bikes plus you've got a slightly wider bar it's 20 mil wider at 760 mil still a mid-length stem so that's a 60 mil length stem and uh, it's an alloy bar with a separate alloy stem. And then the cables on both sides feed down, down the side of the stem and through the top headset bearing, which does potentially create carnage in terms of needing to undo all the cables and undo all the hydraulics if you uh, need to change that top headset bearing. But that's something further down the line and you're just gonna have to uh, throw it over to your local shop uh, if you're going to find that too much of a stress. So, a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's hard to deny that it definitely makes it look neat there, although not so sure about these little cable clips here, because I had to zip tie them on. The glue came off really, really quickly. And while it actually works really well in an intuitive way, having the dropper and the uh, remote lockout all in one batch, you know, it's hard to deny that it doesn't look a bit clumsy. And also uh, this Silverton bar, it's it's a real throwback to kind of like, uh, well, almost 90s kind of riser, sweep, flat, richy type stuff. Uh, so you might need a fair amount of rolling around in terms of position. I mean, you can get there, you can get a decent hand position out of it, but it looks wonky and feels wonky at first. And certainly if you use the uh, logos and roll guides on the front, as a as a way of setting it up you're going to end up with a really really strange position well in my opinion anyway uh presumably the guys at scott love it 
The other difference between these 900 series bikes and the RC bikes is you get a full length uh, Fox transfer dropper, so full 150 mil drop on that, not just a shorter drop. And in terms of tire spec, you get Schwalbe Wicked Will, which is their new downcountry 2.4 inch 29er tire. And Scott actually fit, as you can see from the orange stripe on there, is actually a soft compound front tire which you can only get on Scott Sparks. They don't make that uh, publicly available yet. I've asked them about it. It looks like it'll be 2024 before you can actually buy that tire separately, which is a real shame because that tire is excellent and arguably one of the biggest difference in confidence on the bike, even with the longer fork and uh, the uh, slightly wider bar and different steering geometry. It's kind of that, that tire that really, really pins it all together on the trail. But you'll have to watch the full live ride review from Hard Rock Enduro to uh, get the absolute lowdown on how this bike rides. Ding, 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 rap, 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 bang, bang. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Oh, I love this course. In terms of stop and go, you've got full Shimano XT. 180 mil front brake rotor. It's only the single caliper brake, so it's not twin pot, so that helps keep the weight down. And then you've got Alloy XT crank there and standard cable rear mech with the 1051 cassette. And uh, because this is a bike that, you know, likes picking up speed, I mean, to be fair, they could have gone with a 34 tooth on this, but they've only gone for a 32. But if you're a racer, you can get up to a 38 ring on there, which, uh, that's bigger than some gravel bikes, and if you've got the legs of Nino Schurter, that can give you a race winning advantage, just like it did when he uh, won the sprint downhill at the Brazilian round of the World Cup this year. Uh, on this bike, uh, you're also getting the Syl Syncross Silverton 2 uh, wheel set, which is 30mm internal diameter, but it's an alloy rim, and it's running on basically a uh, DT derivative hub in there, so... Uh, As you can see, slightly clunky, slightly slow pickup, but to be fair, I haven't really noticed it riding the bike. Uh, and it's a very, very reliable uh, hub set in terms of long term, which again, you know, is another advantage of having all the shock and everything sealed away inside. It's really, really well protected from the weather. And then there's a uh, real win in terms of tyre spec on this bike because you're getting an Addict soft compound version of Schwalbe's Wicked Will tyre in the really, really supple, well, I mean, it's still an 805 gram tire, so it's not crazy lightweight, but for a tire with decent tread, and on the front at least, really, really impressive grip that still rolls fast, this Wicked Will is right up there. Unfortunately, this Scott Spark is the only place where you can actually buy this tire as a member of the public. You can't buy it separately uh, through normal channels until at least 2024. And then on the back, you've got the same tyre, but in a uh, fast rolling Addict Speed Grip compound, which is what you'll find as standard in the shops. So I think they've done a really, really good job, you know, convincing Schwalbe to produce a special tyre just for this bike. And unless it's really, really sloppy and slippery, they are pretty much the perfect rubber for this ride. And moving around to the offside, you can see you've got this removable handle for the rear axle, and that's got a T25 and a 6mm Allen key on it, so that's really useful for doing up your bolts and uh, just, check, you know, any adjustment or tightening that you need to do on the trail, just whip that handle out and you can, you know, you don't have to rummage about for your multi-tool. And then you can see the rear brake sits on a separate arm here, which leaves the uh, rear flex stay uh, free to bend and doesn't hinder the suspension movement in any way. And also it's a 180 mil post mount on the rear. So you've got a little bit more braking power through that single caliper uh, XT. Obviously having the shock inside is new for this model, but otherwise it's a really, really well proven and evolved suspension system on the back of this Spark. And it works really, really well. Uh, that's the top of the trunnion mount. So again, the shock is on bearings, uh, which makes it nice and smooth running. You've got external sag meter there, so when you sit on the bike, the little pointer on there rotates around and tells you roughly whether you've got the suspension set up right. And then if you peel this little, uh -huh, see if we can do it without knocking the bike over, peel this little rubber hatch open, you can see 
you've got the travel indicator on the shock as well to uh, let you know whether you're using the right amount of travel. Obviously, it is a bit more tricky to uh, get in there and uh, you know see what's going on with the shock compared to a fully open shock, but the uh, benefits you get in terms of long-term uh, cleanliness and hopefully reduced service life and longer lasting seals and everything on the shock definitely worth a bit of inconvenience in terms of setup i would say the only thing i would say in terms of longevity keep a good eye on that press bit bottom bracket because they don't tend to last as long as a threaded bottom bracket and if they wear too much you can put your frame in danger of getting damaged and then moving further up the frame you can see you've got twin uh, bottle cage mounts on the down tube and the seat tube which is you know a real bonus for a bike that's perfectly set up for long distance racing or trail riding you know you're not going to go thirsty on it and then just i mean the whole bike is just beautifully put together uh you can see on this naked carbon you can see some of the different layups uh in the frame set and i was lucky enough to go to the scott uh, HQ in Switzerland recently and the level of detailing and modeling and analysis that goes into these frames I think they went through a million different uh, potential carbon layups uh, on using various computer programs before they settled on the optimum in terms of kind of weight stiffness durability you know they they go to such levels and they've over the years they've really really refined how they put these bikes together so as you can see massively oversized around the bottom end of the frame for maximum stiffness these huge deep chain stays on it as well so you know your from that super wide bottom bracket to the rear axle is absolutely rock solid in terms of power transmission and then these much slimmer shallower lines on the top of the frame to uh, add a bit of compliance and comfort in there and that's something that uh, scott have been developing for years and years and years you know we're one of the first companies to really produce a modern carbon fiber bike rather than just a plug and play bike uh, with the original endorphin and then moving up to the stem here just so we can see the look at the back of it that cover just pops off And then, and also because they've uh, not painted this frame, that obviously saves quite a significant amount of weight. That saves, you know, a couple of hundred grams over a painted frame. And you can get this bike in the HMF, which is the version here, which is the most affordable carbon fiber. Same stiffness and strength, but a little bit heavier. Then there's an HMX version, and then there's HMX SL, which is the absolute top end bike. So you're looking at around a sub 1900 gram frame weight for the complete chassis which is remarkable for a 120 mil travel bike and then finishing it off you've got Syncross which is basically Scott House brand saddle and lock on grips and in terms of the distance between those contact points or in other words the rest of the geometry you've got 470 mil reach on this large you've got a 76.4 degree seat angle and then a 331 mil bottom bracket height so again really good progressive numbers in terms of setting up a really aggressive climbing poise and keeping the bike pretty low and centered and giving you a decent throw towards that bar as well it's you know it's pretty much bang on for a progressive trail bike certainly with it coming in that slacker head angle setup as standard so that's the tech talk round on the 910 and i'm sorry it was all over the place mainly because just before i've shot this video i've been recording a spark rc versus 910 video with my mate Ryan who uh, pretty much made me vomit on both the uh, both the laps we did around here. So if you want to uh, see a comparison between those two bikes, make sure you watch that video. But if you want to just see how this bike goes on some of the toughest, roughest uh, enduro trails in the country, then make sure or you watch the slip and slide live ride review that I shot at Hard Rock Enduro and there's going to be some more content from the uh, Scott HQ tour coming up when they launch another bike later in the year. So a ton of Scott uh, assets on the channel, but hopefully you found this tech talk around useful anyway. And one thing that I haven't really gone into is the fact that this year, Scott seemed to be absolutely remarkable value. If you kind of compare what you're getting on their bikes compared to people like Trek, compared to people like Specialized, really really good spec for the money especially as you know they're still going through a conventional dealer network they're not going direct or anything like that 
So, uh, massive thanks to Scott for lending me this bike and the RC. Massive thanks to Giro Cycling UK, PT's Products and Crud XL Fenders for sponsoring the channel. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters who pledge a small amount on a monthly basis to uh, help the channel grow, pay for equipment and basically justify my time talking to you about bikes uh, on camera. So if you really like what I'm doing the channel, please consider joining those guys who's, uh, and the names of the investors who give a little bit more are scrolling up on the screen now. And they get exclusive early and extended edits as a thank you. And they get them ad free as well. So there's no interruptions if you're a Patreon supporter. I think that's worth it alone. But anyway, thanks for watching this. Thanks for clicking for, make sure you click for subscriptions for notifications. So you know when that head to head comparison video gets edited and comes live. Uh, give this video a thumbs up please if you've liked it because that means YouTube will share it to more people but if you've got mates who think you'll will enjoy watching me ride and yabber on about the latest mountain bikes and kit then please spread the word about the channel as well your recommendation is the best way for me to get more viewers which means I can justify spending more time talking to this GoPro about bikes for you but for now I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV tech checking the scott spark 910 ultra stealthy top value ultra stealthy top value shimano xt and fox equipped xc trail down country superbike xc trail down country pinner The Scott Spark 910 XC Trail Down Country, whatever you want to call it, this is an this is a But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kes TV, tech checking Scott's uniquely sleek innovation and feature loaded Spark 910 XC Trail Down Country, whatever you want to call it. This is an outstanding high-velocity all-rounder.